Welcome to None Dare Call It Ordinary, the podcast that digs into the unusual, unorthodox, and downright unsettling beliefs found at the depths of the internet and the heights of paranoia. I'm your host, Dylan, and with me is the jocular and jurisprudential Brent. <laughs> what is that second one? Um, it's relating to the law. I just felt, you know, I wanted something. I like that. Uh, based on our recent Supreme Court antics. Yeah. We, oh. Uh, <laughs> we've gone back to a nod number. So yes. Kind of nice. I'm Always into fun. The prime, you need a prime number. Well, actually, no, it's not prime, is it? That's, yeah, we need yeah. to get rid of two. Yeah. And then we get into the prime <laughs> numbers. That's how you really know. They're indivisible. Yep. We have uh, something special today. Yes, we do. Brent and I are in the same room. Yeah! Live from Las Vegas. Well, not live. <laughs> it's right now it's live. <laughs> it's live for us right this minute. It's live for us. You, not so much. Yeah, you're listening to a recording. <laughs> and what holiday is it tomorrow, Brent? I heard it it's is. a special one. To- uh, t- tomorrow's with Columbus Day, right? Yeah, Columbus yeah. Day. All right. My favorite part about... Columbus and the debates about Columbus Day. Yeah. If you read about Columbus, they thought he was a dickhead back then. Like, they <laughs> knew back then, this guy is a little intense. Like, imagine imagine reading about a slave owner where other slave owners are like, that guy is a little <laughs> rough. You know, I mean, that's that's like on the news. edges. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, we should probably <laughs> avoid them at all costs. So today, um, in honor of Columbus Day, well, not really, um, <laughs> The day before Columbus Day, we are continuing our series on the Russia investigation. So this episode is going to take us all the way from the election of Donald J. Trump as president of the United States of America to the appointment of Robert Mueller as special counsel in the investigation into the Russia interference in the election. Dun, dun, dun. And with that, we begin November 8th, 2016. Trump wins! Woo-hoo! He did it! Oh. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Some of you are <laughs> ooing, some yep. of you are eyeing. You can pick a you know. ooh or not. We don't, you know, we're you an equal say. opportunity yep. podcast. You know, we're not going to judge. You'll never know. In public. We won't judge in public, <laughs> but who knows? Just behind your backs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to start November in the month, you know, right in the weeks after the election. It's a little quiet uh, so far. You know, it's not going to last. Uh, certainly not going to last, but, you know, a few things happened. <laughs> So, uh, on November 8th, uh, the day that Donald Trump was elected, Flynn posted, or my, I should say Michael Flynn, the future and former <laughs> <laughs> national security advisor, very quick in between yep. the uh, future and former, but we'll get into that later. Um, he posted a pro-Turkey op-ed uh, uh, on the day that Trump was elected. I'll just assume that's the uh, country Turkey, not the bird. That's my assumption, too, but... Yeah. Though it is November, so that could have gone really either way. I wonder if he wanted to do a twofer. He's like, I got to write this, you know, political article. I got to write this article for, you know, the House at Home magazine. Right. Can I write <laughs> the same article and send it to both magazines? <laughs> Kill two birds, wink, 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 with one op-ed. Nice. I wonder if he tried it. Yeah, know. he might. Um, November 10th, uh, Trump is invited to the White House. And Obama reportedly warns Trump against hiring Michael Flynn. Thanks, Obama. Yeah. Also, again, kind of going back to the Columbus point, was yeah. it actually prescient here? If you think about the coterie around Trump, if Obama felt the need to point out, maybe avoid the Flynn guy, <laughs> out, of, out of anybody, he I mean, Steve Bannon <laughs> is an ethno-nationalist. <laughs> Didn't mention Steve Bannon, specifically <laughs> said, hey, stay away from that Flynn guy. Yep. I think he's up to no good. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good place to be in. <laughs> so then moving right along, November 11th, Devin Nunes, the House Intelligence Committee chair, is named to Trump's transition team. November 18th, Trump names Michael Flynn as National Security Advisor. That's not going to end well. <laughs> Obama, you know, Obama's right on this one. Yeah. You know, we can have disagreements. He probably was wearing a tan suit that day, so give him oh, some Oh, that's, <laughs> Trump is just like, uh, just tan suit tan Obama, suit giving yeah. me bad advice. <laughs> November 18th, Trump picks Jeff Sessions as Attorney General. Yeah, two for one that day. Oh, yeah. Same day. Same day. Yeah, and, and recusal Sessions. was in its earliest infancy. <sighs> oh, damn it, sorry. Spoiler alert. Spoiler, yeah. My bad. Um, I think the recusal was uh, in its was actually still, you know, in the womb. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but it's still a recusal. I, I think we should be very clear about that. Um, you know, recusal starts at conception. That's right. That's exactly right. November 15th, NSA Director Admiral Michael S. Rogers states that the email leak to WikiLeaks was a, quote, conscious effort by a nation state to attempt to achieve a specific 
effect. Hmm. And that is an incredibly vague <laughs> claim. <laughs> it is. Oh, it was something done by somebody for some reason. <laughs> Someone that was conscious yeah. made this decision. Yes. Someone alive <laughs> and awake made this happen. Really top-notch. Got it. Uh, top-notch. Limited uh, to beings with brains. Yeah. Yeah. This wasn't a rock doing this. <laughs> I meant a clear. rock, not the country. Yeah. Uh, this wasn't, you know, say, a cabinet. Right. Again, furniture. <laughs> not. <laughs> I have picked two very bad. Those are first things that came to my head. They were both mistakes. Let's move on. November 28th, Time Magazine names Trump Person of the Year, mm. which I always thought was kind of an underhanded compliment because, I mean, there's not so much of the year left. Yeah, you know, it's like, that's true. You're only in Person of the Year for like a month after that. It's not very <laughs> nice. And in the interview with Time Magazine, Trump expresses further his disbelief in the U.S. intelligence agency's conclusion that Russia was responsible for the hacks. He says, quote, it could be Russia and it could be China. And it could be some guy in his home in New Jersey. Yeah. Oh, I do like how the mythical 4,000 pound human has lost weight and now lives in New Jersey. Yeah, I so mean, you good. don't know. They could still be 4,000 pounds. He that's might, true. He might be so disrespectful of New Jersey that he just <laughs> was like, well, the audience is going to know that he's 4,000 pounds. <laughs> so there's no need to even bring it up. Yeah. Now let's move on to December. Yeah. And let's get. A little more exciting. <laughs> Brent, take it away. What's all going right. on? All right. December. Still colluding after all these years. I'm pretty proud of that. That's I a good one, say. actually. I like, it sounds like a sitcom or something. December 1st, 2016. Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner and Michael. Uh, by the way, the first day yeah. of December. The very <laughs> right, right the there. 7 a.m. No, I don't know the time. <laughs> uh, Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner and Michael Flynn meet with the Russian ambassador Kizliak. At Trump Tower. So, by the way, the Trump White House didn't acknowledge this meeting that happened, uh, had happened until March of 2017 when it was disclosed. Just so you know. Um, <laughs> you. You're welcome. So, the content of the meeting, though, wasn't disclosed okay. until May 2017. Yeah, so we, yeah. we learned about the meeting in March. <laughs> Not what it was about. But we couldn't even learn about what it was about <laughs> till May, like... Ooh, we gotta like, hang it by a thread for months. Yeah, that's a like um, Nixon move. Like, yo, there's <laughs> tapes. What's on them? You say? I'll give you a summary. <laughs> so the Washington Post reported Kizak and Kushner quote discussed the possibility of setting up a secret and secure communications channel between Trump's transition team and the Kremlin. Ooh, maybe an RT Fox News merger. Oh, just underway. that's the only yeah. thing we need. Yeah, that would be great. <sighs> Man, no, please, please, I need a break. Uh, so, factcheck.org writes, quote, In a statement to congressional investigators on July 24th, 2017, Kushner says Kizliak wanted to convey information from what he called his generals about U.S. policy in Syria. Kushner said the exchange of information did not occur during the transition because neither party could arrange a secure line of communication. Uh, I asked if they had an existing communication channel at this embassy we could use where we would be comfortable transmitting the information they wanted to relay to General Flynn. The ambassador said that would not be possible, and so we all agreed that we would receive this information after the inauguration. Nothing else occurred. Kushner statement reads. What he called his generals <laughs> is, is really the takeaway for me yeah, on I that think, one. Yeah. Like, why couldn't he... <laughs> My so-called generals. Yeah. Like, hey. Yeah. It's, and it's usually, <laughs> there's another word that looks like generals and begins with a G and ends with a LS that you, <laughs> it, and I imagine it would be more commonly used in the construction, my yeah. so-called whatever, <laughs> which is, when I first, like, skimmed this, I'm like, oh, no, generals. Okay. <laughs> I didn't expect that. That was coming out of left field. <laughs> so, we're at December 13th, 2016. Jared Kushner meets with Chief of Oh Fuck Me. Um, <laughs> Chief of Oh Fuck Me. Um, that is not what it is. <laughs> can you say it, Dylan? Better than I can? Let's see. Venet Venetia Konumbank. Venetia Konumbank. Sergey in Gorkov. So, anyway, this is a Russian state run bank which was sanctioned by the Obama administration in 2014, right after Russia annexed Crimea. So, according to factcheck.org, 
quote, under the, under the sanctions, U.S. entities are prohibited from conducting any financial deals with this bank. <laughs> um, <laughs> Putin appointed Gorkov to run the bank. Wait, I want to. We've got to do it. We've got to know it. Yeah. We've got to do a pronunciation check on the internet. Keep withholding these, what these meetings and things are about. Because the scope of this meeting was not revealed until March 2017. Not revealing anything to us. All right. (laughs) How to pronounce it. From the appropriately named howtopronounce.com. Nice. Which gives a uh, ranking of three out of five in terms of the difficulty of pronunciation. That would be a moderate difficulty. Um, That is based on 11 votes. Let's see. Venetia. Venetia Conum Bank. 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 Went to Russia. Gonna have ourselves a time. All right. Venetia Conum Bank. Yes. So. Anyway, at this meeting, at this time, Sean Spicer, the White House press secretary, stated that. Quote, throughout the campaign and the transition, Jared served as the official primary point of contact with foreign governments and officials until we had State Department officials up. However, in a statement, this bank said that Gorkov did meet with Kushner in his capacity as the then chief executive officer of Kushner Companies, um, which is his family's real estate company. God, typical Kush. Yeah. Right. Kushner Companies just can't even bother to come up with a name. <laughs> At least Trump. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it's already a word. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, right. Trump, you know, Trump card, you know. Yeah. It's already got that cachet. Yeah. Kushner, I mean, it doesn't mean anything. Yep. Kushner companies. <laughs> <laughs> so on 20, uh, July 24th, 2017, Kushner stated to congressional investigators that he spoke to Gorkov for 20 to 25 minutes and, quote, he told me a little about his bank and made some statements about the Russian economy. At no time... Was there any discussion about my company's business transactions, real estate projects, loans, banking arrangements, or any private businesses of any kind? Which is also the opposite of what Gorkov said. Right. If I'm reading this correctly. I'm just shocked that Kushner spoke. I've just never heard that. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't think think it was a real person. Um, So, yeah, that's interesting. December 22nd, 2016, Michael Flynn invites Kislak to the U.S. if Russia would defeat or at least delay an upcoming U.N. Security Council resolution vote, which condemned Israel's building of settlements in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. So the resolution was allowed to come up for a vote by the Obama administration, which angered Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu. The UN resolution did pass a day later. Russia voted in favor and the U.S. abstained from voting and Yahweh smiled. Damn, I would not. There's a lot to say about Israeli-Palestinian stuff that yeah. I'm not qualified to say. Exactly, me neither. Whatever the situation is, I would not want to be... I would not want to be the Israeli ambassador to the UN. God, no. they're not into it. I mean, let's be honest. They're not into it <laughs> at all. So December 25th, 2016, Michael Flynn texts Kizliak, Merry Christmas. Oh, See? that's nice. In the war on Christmas, the Russians are allies. Sorry, yes. Reagan. Yes. Yeah. So December is also the um, beginnings of both the congressional and the intelligence community investigations into uh, Russian interference in the 2016 election. So December 9th, the Washington Post reports that the CIA claims that the Russians were trying to help Trump win the election. So how deep is the CIA in the entire deep state? Deeper than the FBI? I, they've got to be gotta deeper be than deep. the FBI. Yeah. I mean, definitely. I yes. imagine... Uh, there's another, so I'm going to plug another podcast, the National Security Law Podcast. They often nice. talk about national security issues in terms of a dip, a layered dip. Okay. And so I think the CIA is probably the beans. They're probably near <laughs> the bottom. Yeah. Um, and FBI is maybe the sour cream layer, which I feel <laughs> is generally more the top of the uh, the bean dip of d- the deep state. Yep. Um, <laughs> so yeah, definitely. I think CIA, definitely deeper. Nice. So Trump, in response to this Washington Post story, issues a statement criticizing the U.S. intelligence community. Quote, These are the same people that said Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. The election ended a long time ago in one of the biggest electoral college victories in history. It's now time to move on and make America great again. Wow, Trump goes full Michael Moore there. Even even uses move on, like (laughs) moveon.org. I don't know what's going on. (laughs) We need to move on. Very confusing. Um, also, the election ended a long time ago 
I just want to confirm that this is December 9th, <laughs> which would be Classic. 30, 30, almost exactly a month. So that is, that might explain a lot. The Trump thinks a month of time is a long ago. Yeah. <laughs> so Trump thinks he's been president for like 100 years at this point. So um, also, President Obama makes a statement that he ordered a detailed review of hacks committed by the Russians during the 2016 presidential campaign. Ugh, thanks, Obama. Once again. Once again. Thanks. <laughs> And then, so that's more the intelligence community side. And then December 12th, um, congressional Republican leaders make an announcement saying they will investigate Russian attempts to disrupt the 2016 presidential election. So speaking of Russia, Russia has some interesting reactions to the Trump election. On December 9th, Russian parliament claps for Trump's victory. Um, but I guess, you know, I guess news travel slow to them. I don't know why December 9th. <laughs> because they clapped for it. So it's not yeah. like, I get, like, okay, December 9th is when the Russian parliament, like, passes a decree yeah. or saying, hey, this is great. And they start clapping. So I imagine, <laughs> I just imagine it's like they're watching footage from Mars or something, and they're just waiting, and they're just, they've been sitting there for a month, <laughs> and then it happens, and they start clapping. Um, I hope that's not what happened. December 15th, um, this is a full week after the clapping incident. Wow. Putin Clap sends gate. Trump a letter asking to restore U.S. and Russian relations. Of course, since news travel so slow... To and from Russia, Trump has yet to receive this letter. I yeah, think. we actually, we got a leak uh, from the carrier pigeon currently <laughs> carrying this letter. So, Obama sanctions. Obama sanctions. Uh, Obama sanctions. December 29th, 2016, President Obama, in his last month in office, announces sanctions against Russia for its attempts to interfere with the presidential election. So Michael Flynn also makes a total of five phone calls to Russian Ambassador Kislyak regarding the sanctions. Okay, Flynn, that's a little desperate, getting a little too stalkerish there. Yeah, right? especially because they're all on the same day. Like, <laughs> yeah, like I want to know, are they in the same hour? Right. Like, I want to know. He, he needs to get a hold of Kislyak here. Yeah. He wants to talk to that he Russian. Does. Yep. So Flynn pleads with Kislyak to refrain from relate, uh, retaliating to these new sanctions. And Kislyak responds that Russia would, quote, moderate its response to the sanctions as a result of Flynn's request. We'll explain more in this later. Who explaining? We'll explain. Uh, uh, so November, no, we're not going back that December. far. December! December 30th! Putin issues a statement stating Russia will not retaliate against U.S. sanctions. That's interesting how that's a day after Flynn talked to Kislyak about that. It is. It is strange. Interesting. Mm-hmm coincidence quote while we reserve the right to take reciprocal measures we're not going to downgrade ourselves to the level of irresponsible kitchen diplomacy that sounds like the worst food network reality show ever actually <laughs> what the hell kitchen diplomacy with gordon <laughs> ramsay he's gonna clean up the un putin continues quote in our future steps on the way towards the res restoration of Russia-United States relations, we will proceed from the policy pursued by the administration of D. Trump. So, via Twitter, of course, Trump praises Putin's decision stating that the Russian president is, quote, very smart. Very smart. Very smart. I agree. All right, so now we're moving on to January. This will be before the inauguration. Uh, so the first thing we should mention, uh, something that kind of takes us from January all the way until the end of the timeline for this episode is from January to August of 2017, Cohen received payments totaling $500,000 from investment firm Columbus Nova, whose biggest client is Russian oligarch Victor Vekelsberg. Columbus Nova said there was no connection between Vekelsberg and the Cohen hire. But we're going to have to see about that later. <laughs> A little so foreshadowing. <laughs> so, um, January 9th, 2017, Jared Kushner, White Ooh. House Special Advisor. <laughs> All before learning how to speak. Pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. Not, we haven't heard a word from him yet. Nope. <laughs> he can speak, but only in private. Okay. And only to foreigners, <laughs> which is kind of strange considering yeah. it's kind of the opposite, the of, opposite of Trump's general approach. Speak right. Loudly, not to foreigners. <laughs> he's, Kushner's, you know, that's he's a moderate. Kushner's a moderate in the, uh, in the White House. <laughs> All right, so now we got some Flynn news. Uh, you know, Flynn, who is no longer future NSA advisor. Now he's currently he's a pre-former NSA advisor. <laughs> 
Uh, let's see here. On January 4th, 2017, Michael Flynn tells a transition team lawyer that his work as a secretly paid lobbyist for Turkey is under investigation. Woo-hoo, Turkey! Yeah, Turkey, pretty cool. It's like, Coming back. I-, I wonder if he, it was unclear if he introduced it as, hey, 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 um, I was secretly paid lobbyist for Turkey. Like, did he <laughs> introduce it that way? Or did he... Like, hey, I might have, you know, done some volunteer work for Turkey. Right. And then the lawyer's problem was like, oh, actually, no, I was secretly paid. <laughs> About a week later, on January 12th, the Washington Post reports that Kisilak and Flynn spoke on December 29th, which we've already spoken about. And that very day is when the U.S. announced the new sanctions on Russia due to election meddling. It's the whole incident we already talked about earlier. Sean Spicer says, quote, The call centered on the logistics of setting up a call with the president of Russia and the president-elect after he was sworn in, and they exchanged logistical information on how to initiate and schedule that call. That was it, plain and simple. I do enjoy the phone calls to set up future phone calls routine. I personally prefer the phone call to set up the next phone call to set up the final phone call. Yeah. That's my preference. Yeah. That's just me. I like setting up, I prepare calls like 10 calls in advance. (laughs) You go back 10. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like all day, basically. It's basically just five times. Yeah. January 14th, a couple days later, on Meet the Press, when asked about the call between Kisilak and Flynn, incoming Chief of Staff Reince Priebus says, quote, The subject matters of sanctions or the actions taken by the Obama administration did not come up in the conversation. Hmm. The next day, January 15th, Mike Pence, Vice President-elect. And man who makes God smile. Uh, every day. <laughs> Pence states on Face the Nation that Flynn and Kisilak did not discuss U.S. sanctions on Russia. He said, quote, They did not discuss anything having to do with the United States' decision to expel diplomats or impose censure against Russia. So time for the RC investigation. Yeah, and what is the intelligence community doing about this? So sometime in early January, the FISA court agrees to extend the FBI surveillance of Carter Page. Uh, Carter Page. Again, it's kind of like Obama. It's kind of like Obama, again, like warning specifically about Flynn. Like when there's only a FISA warrant against Carter Page (laughs) out of all these characters. Bad news. (sighs) January 3rd, 2017, just before Trump is to meet with U.S. intelligence officials about Russia's interference in the U.S. elections, Trump tweets out, quote, The intelligence briefing on so-called Russian hacking was delayed until Friday. Perhaps more time needed to build a case. Very strange. Very strange. January 4th, 2017. Trump quotes Julian Assange, who said a 14-year-old could have hacked the DNC. Quote, why was the DNC so careless? Hey, let's not get lazy here. It's a 14-year-old, 4,000-pound man from New Jersey. Yeah, it's a <laughs> lot of stuff working on. against that guy. Yeah. I also, I like the victim blaming. Yes. I like how that's the approach. I love it. Also, there's a lot of smart 14-year-olds. They're just hanging out on 4chan all day. <laughs> you know, I'm sure, you know, Ju- Julius Hunt's probably right. <laughs> January 6, 2017, a declassified intelligence report is released by the Office of the Director of National in- uh, Intelligence. Quote, Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered an influence campaign in 2016 aimed at the U.S. presidential election. So the report states that from July 2015 to June 2016, Russian intelligence services had access to the Democratic National Committee computer network and released Various hacked material to WikiLeaks, as well as other outlets to, quote, help President-elect Trump's election chances. So the DNI report contains no evidence of collusion between Russia and the Trump campaign. No collusion, liberals. Which hunt. Trump is briefed by U.S. intelligence officials on their findings. After this briefing, Trump releases a statement saying, quote, while Russia, China, and other countries... What about New Jersey? Outside groups and uh, people are consistently trying to break through the cyber infrastructure of our government, governmental institutions, businesses and organizations, including the Democratic National Committee. There was absolutely no effect on the outcome of the election, including the fact that there was no tampering whatsoever with voting machines. Good enough for me. So January 11th, 2017, in a news conference, Trump finally admits that he believes Russia was behind the DNC hack. Hey, you know... We all make mistakes. I'm glad he's coming around. I'm glad the deep state, the bean layer, and the sour cream layer were able to get together and help him see the light on this one. Yes. But then he also tweets out, quote, Intelligence agencies should never have allowed this fake news to leak into the public. One last shot at me. Are we living in Nazi Germany? I think the answer is no. (laughs) I don't think 
This is Nazi Germany. <laughs> I don't think this is Germany. Right. <laughs> I just want to make sure I, I did have a long plane flight to Las Vegas. So, am I in Germany all of a sudden? You never know. All right, so we gotta, we gotta, you know, we're talking about the the deep state. We gotta bring in Mister Comey. He has a light pre inauguration. It's gonna get much bumpier afterwards because um, Trump is still trying to figure out what part of the deep state Comey is in. Is he just the cheese? <laughs> On top, like maybe, you know, I can, you know, get him from the top, or is he part of the beans, you know, (laughs) the beans of illegitimacy. (laughs) So on January 6th, 2017, um, after Trump's intelligence community briefing on Russian interference that Brent so deliciously described. (laughs) Thank you. FBI Director James Comey, you're welcome, remains (laughs) alone in the room with the president-elect to brief Trump on what Comey later said were, quote, some personally sensitive aspects of the information assembled during the assessment that were, quote, salacious and unverified to reassure Trump that he is not personally under investigation. Comey finally took a break uh, from opening and closing investigations in Hillary Clinton. Now he's got some new investigations to open and close. He's probably, like, worried for a minute there, like, no investigations. Yeah, because he uh, he seems, we're going to learn, he is obsessed (laughs) with how Trump is not under investigation. (laughs) He, he brings it up seemingly every so time much. those two are alone in a room together, which happens a lot, by the way. <laughs> Just cannot get over yeah. it. Comey stated later in his written testimony prior to his June 8th Senate hearing, quote, that was true. We did not have an open counterintelligence case on him. Directly after this one-on-one encounter with Trump, Comey types up some notes in his car, which is one of seven memos he wrote about his one-on-one meetings with Trump. You know, he typed, I was kind of confused. He typed him out in his car. Like, I hope he had a typewriter. (laughs) That or maybe, like, I mean, I guess it's better than Snapchatting his memos. Yeah, that's true. Maybe just did it on his iPhone. Who knows? I'd like to know. I'm going to have to reach out to Comey and figure out, how'd you type those up? Yeah. All right, but enough about Comey, you know, typing up letters in his car. (laughs) What's Congress doing? So, um, on January 10th, a bunch of things happen. First is the Senate Intelligence Committee launches its Russia investigation. Hmm. Jeff Sessions has his confirmation hearing for Attorney General, and he says, quote, I did not have communications with Russians. I did not have sexual relations with that country. That's that's a pretty good, pretty good. Bill Clinton, yeah! <laughs> yeah! We're working on that for days. <laughs> days. Walking around the house. However... Sessions later acknowledged that he actually had two meetings with Russian Ambassador Kislak during the campaign, though we would say neither was related to the Trump campaign. And then also on January 10th, James Comey won't say if FBI is investigating (laughs) Trump in the Senate intelligence hearing again. (laughs) Not going to talk about it. There's no investigation. It's not happening. (laughs) January 13th, the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence announces it will investigate, quote, Russian intelligence activities during the 2016 presidential election, quote, including any intelligence regarding links between Russia and individuals associated with political campaigns. Mm-hmm. When they talk about political campaigns, it was Trump and Gary Johnson. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, that guy's a Definitely. We just know that. Yeah, yeah. So, the Steele dossier. Dun, 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 January 10th, 2017, BuzzFeed publishes the dossier from the former British intelligence officer that has salacious and lengthy allegations of how Russians attempted to compromise Trump and his campaign. In case you're listening from the past, from a few years ago, Mm -hmm. you heard correctly, BuzzFeed is now (laughs) in the (laughs) adult serious news game. So, Trump tweets out that this is, quote, fake news. So, fake news, unfair and unbalanced. That's, that's That seems right. That's yeah. good. And I mean, <laughs> so. I mean, what are you going to do when there's a memo saying that you yeah. watch two Russian or Russian prostitutes pee out of bed? I mean, yeah. you gotta, that's, you gotta, you gotta lie just, about it. I mean, you can't. <laughs> can't just be like, yeah, that's me. That's fine. So, January 10th, 2017, Michael Cohen tweets, quote, I have never been to Prague in my life. This was in regards to a charge from the Steele dossier that in 2016, he met Russians there. I believe him. Yeah. I bet, you know. I, I believe him. That's the one true thing that Michael Cohen has ever said. Yep. So, the Clinton email investigation. This is on Jan- January 12th, 2017. Yeah, that's still going on, by the yeah, way. Yeah, that's you know, still happening. Talk about it. <laughs> Got investigations on top of investigations here. So, DOJ Inspector General announces investigation into the actions by FBI 
and the DOJ in the Clinton email probe, which included whether the actions by top officials were motivated by political bias. Yeah, so this is more investigation of the investigation. Yeah, that's right. But who's going to start the investigation of the investigation uh, of the investigation? Probably Comey. Yeah, he, he, he's, yeah that makes sense. he's just chomping at the yeah, bit. He is like, oh my God, this is You great. mean there could be possibly a nested <laughs> infinity of investigations? <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> So uh, before you know, before we get to the big day in January that you're all waiting to hear about, we got a few more miscellaneous uh, Russian shenanigans to talk about. So <laughs> January 11th, Eric Prince, Blackwater founder, not the fish, uh, meets with uh, Kirill Dmitriev, head of Russian government backed fund with ties to Putin in Seychelles. I think that's how you say it. Yeah. I think so. I'm going to pretend it is. Sure. Washington Post and New York Times reported that this was to open up a back channel between Trump and Moscow. So basically the plot of the new James Bond movie. Great. Yeah, I think that is correct. <laughs> also, like, what is with the back channels? Oh, I mean, God. he's going to be president. I know. Can we do a front channel? Yes, please. That's what I want. I want to see more front channels. January 13th, Trump tells the Wall Street Journal that he is considering lifting the sanctions on Russia. Ah, Trump feels comfortable opening up to the Wall Street Journal. Must be something in their name he admires. Oh! Mm. See, they're the front joke. channel that we need. <laughs> January 16th, Anthony Scaramucci. The it's moon. Scaramucci. Uh, Scaramucci. <laughs> Uh, a Trump transition aide and hedge fund CEO meets up with Kirill Dmitriev of the Russian Direct Investment Fund in Davos. RDIF was under sanctions at this time. Oh. January 17th, Scaramucci tells the Russian state news that he believes that the Russian sanctions have had, quote, in some ways an opposite effect. Okay. January 18th, Jared Kushner leaves out meetings with Russians on security clearance disclosure. Oh, conveniently skips over the colluded with Russia box on oh, the forums. Oh, yeah. yeah. So there was a time in my life where I applied to work for the TSA. Mm. Um, and that form is long. I can only <laughs> imagine the form he had to fill out. Oh, so I'm going to give him some wiggle room here. <laughs> yeah. There's definitely a lot of boxes like, no, yeah. I, I am not a terrorist. <laughs> so I can imagine yeah. he just skipped over the box. It's, you know, he's human. He just, you know, he forgot. <laughs> I believe it. Yep. Is he human? I'm sure. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. He is a <laughs> sentient organism. Okay. <laughs> oh, I actually don't even know if he's an organism, technically. He's he's there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and then January 19th, Senators Warren and Cardin asked the U.S. Treasury to investigate Scaramucci Russia Fund interaction. Mm. Finally, January 20th, 2017, Donald J. Oh. Trump is inaugurated the 45th president. Oh. Of the United States! And God dies. Ooh, Ooh yeah. Too far. Well, yeah. God's, you know... He's like, Pence, been Pence, smiling Pence, too much. Pence, Pence, yeah. Pence. Yeah. <laughs> so January 20th was also a busy day. There was more that happened besides the uh, the big event. According to the New York Times, Michael Cohen meets with the Russian oligarch and Putin ally Victor Vesselberg at Trump's inauguration. Mm, I like, I like you know, mixing nice. business and pleasure here. <laughs> Vexelberg was the guest of his cousin and RNC donor, Andrew Intrater. Hmm. Natalia Veselnitskaya, Russian lawyer, also attended the D.C. inauguration party hosted by Representative Dana Rohrabacher, a Republican from California. And if that name is familiar, that's because that is who the uh, meeting, the famous Trump Tower uh, Russian meeting was with, uh, you know, Manafort and Cohen was there and yeah. Trump Jr. and all those casts of characters. Yes. All right. The inauguration's over. There's been a honeymoon of two days. <laughs> you know, Trump is <laughs> is relaxed. I have to say, you plugged a podcast. I have to say Trump Inc. is a good podcast. Oh, they yes. talk about the amount of money spent on this inauguration and like money missing and stuff. That's like really, really strange. But anyway, great podcast called Trump Inc. I think it's WNYC podcast, but listen to it. So uh, two days after the inauguration, big day for Michael Flynn. He is sworn in as National Security Advisor. At the same time, the Wall Street Journal reports that U.S. counterintelligence agents investigated the communications between Russian officials and Flynn. Uh, it's perfect timing. Perfect yeah. timing. So he is uh, now, so I want to make sure I get this clear. He <laughs> was future. He's no longer future National Security Advisor. He is now pre-former National <laughs> Security Advisor. Yeah, That's the transition. January 24th. Uh, Flynn is interviewed by FBI agents, and just to put that into context, that is four days. <laughs> He's been the National Security <laughs> Advisor for four uh, days. Uh, yeah, somewhere Obama in his tan suit's just sitting there being like, uh, shaking his head. Obama. Yep. I mean, at least a week. I'd like a week. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so specifically, Flynn is asked about two conversations he had 
with the Russian ambassador to the U.S., Kisilak, on December 2016, when he was still a private citizen. And again, we've already discussed those earlier in this episode. Flynn says that he did not ask Kisilak on that date for Russia to refrain from retaliating after Obama administration announced sanctions that day against Russia for 2016 election interference. Mm -hmm. And as Maury would say, and we found out that was a lie. (laughs) Yeah. Flynn also mentions that he did not ask Kisilak on December 22nd, 2016, for Russia to defeat or delay a UN Security Council resolution approved December 23rd, which we mentioned earlier condemning Israel's building of settlements in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. And the lie detector proved that was a lie as well! And you get a lie, and you get a lie. Oh, yeah, Flynn is the father of so many children of lies. (laughs) The next day, January 25th, Acting Attorney General Sally Yates hears about the Flynn FBI interview. The day after that, Sally Yates meets with Donald McGahn, White House counsel, in his office. She tells McGahn that high-ranking administration officials, that includes VP Mike Pence, had made statements about General Flynn's conduct that we knew to be untrue. Yates was referring to specific administration statements that said Flynn did not discuss U.S. sanctions against Russia with the Russian ambassador. This will be explained more later when Yates testifies before Congress, Mm -hmm. but yeah, not so good. good. White House discovers that Michael Flynn misled Pence about his conversation with the Russians. And then finally, January 30th, Sally Yates invites McGahn to the DOJ to look over the Flynn files. It is uncertain if he came or not. Hmm. Maybe someday we'll know. Maybe someday we'll know. We'll find out one day, and then like a few months afterwards, we'll find out (laughs) what it is. What what actually he said. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So, January 22nd, 2017, James Comey called over by Trump to come over and to shake hands with him during the White House reception. You know, I I was thinking Comey really should have worn his outfit made of window drapes so he could have blended a little better in the background. (laughs) He's like, just like six, seven (laughs) Comey. Really? It was like, I was, you know, have you remember those rides, um, the Gravitron and stuff where you're like stuck to the walls, it's spinning? Yeah. And like, um, whatever, fairs, state fairs, that's what he's like. He's just like smashed against the wall. Like, don't look at me. And I imagine that meme of like when uh, Homer Simpson like disappears into the into the bush. That's, yeah. what, that's what Colby yeah, was trying to do. What... So, January 27, 2017, Trump and Comey privately dined together at the White House. Ooh la la. I wonder what they're going to talk about. (laughs) Let's have Brent tell us. I know you all don't know. That's right. I'll tell you a week later. Comey would later testify that, quote, the president said, I need loyalty. I expect loyalty. So I replied, you will always get honesty from me. Not the same thing. (laughs) So he paused and then said, that's what I want. Honest loyalty. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, wow. Just insert words for me. Thank you. Comey also tells Trump that he is not personally under investigation at the time. He like, I think he does like doing that more than (laughs) investigations, really. Just telling people that they're not under investigation. So, more detail about this later. When we discuss Comey's testimony in June, dishonest loyalty, that was the worst. That is the worst. I much prefer honest disloyalty. I mean, just let me know. Also, I think everyone listening to this really needs to follow James Comey on Twitter and ask him, send a DM, because that is the apparently the communication method of choice for yes. uh, those in D.C. Send him a DM. Ask him if you're under investigation. He'll love telling you you're not. <laughs> okay, now, investigations. Here they are. January 25th, 2017, the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence states that it will investigate Russia's actions to influence the 2016 presidential election and, quote, any intelligence regarding links between Russia and individuals associated with political campaigns. So the FBI interviews Big Papa. Big Papa! He loves it when you call him that. Uh, he's asked about contacts he may have made with Russians during the 2016 campaign. This is when Big Papa makes false statements to the FBI. More on this later. So I, ho- I hope like no one's just getting this when they don't know. They're like, Big Papa. Like, they've <laughs> listened to the <laughs> last episode. That is, uh, just to clarify, that yeah. is George Papadopoulos, Papadopoulos. Who we lovingly call. Yes. Emphasis on lovingly. Yeah. We call him Big Papa. Because <laughs> he loves it when you call him <laughs> Big Papa. <laughs> So, finish out the month here with some odds and ends. Um, January 27th, 2017, Michael Cohen meets with Felix Sater, a businessman, and Ukrainian Audrey Artemenko? Um, yeah, so okay. he's businessman, um, Ukrainian, half goat. Yes. Um, his name is Felix Sater. Uh, I <laughs> wanted to clarify that in case anyone had any misgivings. 
So in this meeting, they pitch a plan for Russia to lease Crimea and sanctions to be dropped. The next day, January 28th, Trump receives a phone call from Putin congratulating him on his victory. Trump really prefers a phone call, though, to set up the official phone call. So it's just, you know, common etiquette. I think he was probably a little upset. Yeah. It's like, we haven't even figured out how we're going to have this phone call. Exactly. So January 30th, Sally Gates is fired by Trump for telling the DOJ to not defend Trump's travel ban. Hey, Yate Gate. Yate Gate. Yate Yate Gate. Oh, yeah. By the way, uh, Trump is also president during this time. (laughs) And has policy agendas that he's pushing. Like, I just... Yeah, right. In case in case that came out of nowhere, right. like, he is also <laughs> the head of a government. <laughs> so, Muchin, the treasurer's secretary, doesn't say if Scaramucci violated sanctions policies. So, there's that. That's Good the month. for him. Yeah. It's exciting. Okay, so February, we're going to start February 2nd. Uh, this is when the Senate Judiciary Subcommittee launches Election Russia Investigation. Committee below the committee. The committee below the committee. So this is the bean oh, dip of the committee. It's the plate. <laughs> <laughs> Man, how deep does the deep state go? <laughs> February 8th, uh, Jeff Sessions confirmed as Attorney General. Yeah. Good day for America and Alabama. <laughs> uh, I believe he is former senator yeah. from Alabama, if I'm not mistaken. So February 13th, 2017, in the job for less than a month, (laughs) Michael Flynn resigns as the National Security Advisor. Finally, now, he he was pre-former, now he is current former. (laughs) Current former NSA. Nice. But now, you know, we got to get into the real stuff. Got some Comey news in February. February 14th. Ooh, Valentine's Day. So in the Oval Office in the quiet hours of the night, Trump asked Comey to marry him. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. I was uh, reading some of the steamy fan fiction pulled up here on Valentine's Day. Sorry, go ahead, Don. Okay, yeah. Oof. Oof. That's horrible. (laughs) You know, you joke, sir, but I bet there is, (laughs) there probably is White House, (laughs) like, sexy fan fiction on all this. We're going to try to not look it up <laughs> and narrate it for you in our next episode. <laughs> On Valentine's Day 2017 in the Oval Office, President Trump privately asked Comey to shut down the investigation into Michael Flynn, saying, quote, I hope you can see your way clear to letting this go, to letting Flynn go. He is a good guy. I hope you can let this go. <laughs> this is according to the memo Comey wrote, in which we'll discuss more later. So just as Comey loves to tell people they're not under investigation... <laughs> Trump loves telling people to not investigate. <laughs> it's a good combo. Yeah, yeah, it is a good combo. Synergy. There's some synergy there with the investigations. The next day, February 15th, according to the New York Times, FBI Director James Comey tells U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions that, quote, he did not want to be left alone again with the president. <laughs> oh, jeez. Just after Valentine's Day right. in the Oval Office, things got a little heated. I mean, you know that uh, that book has got to be called Dishonest Loyalty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> so, here's some more shenanigans. The day after, February 15th, 2017, Ryan Priebus, the White House Chief of Staff, asks <clears throat> FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe if the agency would help the White House get rid of news stories about contacts between Trump aides and Russians during the 2016 presidential campaign. I know that's the FBI's job, right? They get rid of... Yeah, they always get rid of stuff. Yeah. That's what they do. Okay, just want to make sure. <laughs> the Federal Bureau of Ignoring, ignoring News Stories about Trump. I think that's, that's what that one, I stand for. for. It's a lot packed in there. That's right. So, February 16, 2017, at a press conference, Trump is asked by a reporter, did you direct Mike Flynn to discuss sanctions with Russia, Russian ambassador? He answered with, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> I, you always go with a double denial. Yeah, you say it yeah. twice. You yeah. say it twice. <laughs> you know, for emphasis, for emphasis. <laughs> for the second time, the FBI interviews Trump foreign policy advisor Papadopoulos, who we lovingly call Big Papa. Lovingly. Yes. Lovingly. Lovingly. So, February 17th, 2017, Big Papa deactivates a Facebook account that contains some info on his contact with the aforementioned, quote, professor. Which I believe in the uh, the previous episode is Professor Mifsud, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. Yeah, that's right. Um, also, he deactivated it. He didn't delete it. That's so true. He's not sure. Yeah, he's, he's like, like hey, maybe I'll go back to it. How am I going to get all those Facebook right. events? You know, people assume you don't exist if you're not on the Facebook. <laughs> So Carter Page says on the PBS NewsHour that he had no Russian meetings in the last year. 
you know, but this may be biased since we are getting information from the PBS timeline. So the last day of February. Also, just to be clear, yeah. Carter Page totally did have right. those meetings. Yeah. February 27, 2017, Nunes states to reporters that Flynn and Trump didn't coordinate over Russian sanctions. Thank God. Here comes March. So, uh, March, we start March 1st with some Sessions news. Um, On March 1st, the Washington Post reports that then-Senator Sessions, quote, spoke twice last year with Russia's ambassador to the United States. This included a private meeting in Sessions' office on September 8, 2016. This report directly contradicts what Sessions said in the Senate committee on the judiciary during his confirmation hearing. Directly contradicts. (laughs) Just want to repeat those words. March 2nd, at a press conference, Sessions acknowledges that he did in fact meet with the Russian ambassador and failed to disclose these meetings to the Senate. Mm. Saying, quote, in retrospect, I should have slowed down and said... But I did meet one Russian official a couple of times. That would be the ambassador. <laughs> yeah, I should have slowed down and quit lying. <laughs> weird, weird way of phrasing that. I know. Yeah. Sessions then announces that he would recuse himself from, quote, any existing or future investigations of any matters relating in any way to the campaigns for President of the United States. Also on March 2nd, the Deputy Attorney General Rod J. Rosenstein later became the top Justice Department official that oversees the Russian inquiry. That name sounds familiar. It does sound yeah. familiar. Um, news slightly lately. I think he may or may not be. Yeah. I think at the end of recording this, who knows? Who knows? Like, <laughs> it seemed like every day. It's yeah, like, is the he Kavanaugh really? thing is taking up all the... Yeah, we just have so, you know, finally we can get back to debating whether or not he's fired or if Rosenstein is fired or not. <laughs> we know Kavanaugh got the job, yeah. so now... <laughs> Let's debate about whether Rosenstein still has a job. <laughs> On March 4th, according to the New York Times, while vacationing in Mar-a-Lago, Trump asked Sessions to reverse his recusal from the Russia investigation. Sessions reportedly refuses. Yeah, once you re- recuse, you can't go back. Once a recusal, always a recusal. Yeah, you yeah. joke, but that seems like totally right. I know. It seems there's nothing worse than <laughs> exactly. like, oh, I'm going to go back on this recusal. That seems way, you're way look guilty. <laughs> And then March 6, 2017, Sessions writes official letter clarifying his meetings with the Russians. But now, you know, enough about Sessions. Obama is who we really need to be talking about, because there's some Obama wiretap nonsense going on. (laughs) So, March 4th, 2017, in a barrage of tweets, President Trump... (laughs) (laughs) A barrage. That's like a a gander of geese. It's a barrage of tweets. Uh, Trump accuses Obama of illegally tapping my phones in October during the, quote, very sacred election process. (laughs) Very sacred. Can you be very sacred? (laughs) I I wonder about that. Yeah, it's like levels to how sacred this is. So Trump compares Obama's actions to Watergate and says of Obama that he's a, quote, very bad or sick guy. I like he gives him the escape hatch. Yeah. He could, hey, he could just be mentally ill. Yeah. <laughs> and Trump offers no evidence of this accusation. But evidence is usually something the deep state harps about, so let's move on. Yeah, that's definitely... That's, kind of, that's, that's the guacamole uh, in the deep state dip is always <laughs> harping about that. In reversal to previous statements, Carter Page says he did meet with the Russians. Oh! Ho, ho. Wow. Wow. Roger Stone tweets, quote, perfectly legal back channel with Assange, then deletes the tweet. (laughs) Roger Stone is, to me, the weirdest part of this whole thing. He's like this weird... Yeah, he really does look like a Batman villain. Like, he (laughs) actually looks like the Penguin from, like, the Adam West Batman. (laughs) I think that I think Bill Maher made that joke last week. It was really funny. March 5th, 2017, Comey asked the DOJ to refute publicly Trump's unfounded Obama wiretapping charge. So, March 22nd, Chairman of the House Intelligence Committee Devin Nunes holds a press conference to state that he had reviewed intelligence reports that show, quote, incidental collection of some unnamed Trump transition team members had taken place after the election was over. Keep in mind that Nunes is a former Trump transition team member. So he states that information was illegally obtained and was unrelated to Russia, but rather raises questions about whether the intelligence community was improperly unmasking U.S. citizens whose identities should have been protected. Did Nunes claim it was illegally obtained? I wanted to clarify that. Oh, yeah, I think he did. Did I say? You said illegally obtained. Oh, I, just want, I just want yeah, to double check. Right. Okay. So Trump states to, uh, to Time Magazine that this new information brought to light by Nunes proves he was right when he tweeted that Obama was tapping his phones. 
Nunes himself stated that the information reviewed, quote, doesn't mean that Obama wiretap Trump, wiretapping Trump, Trump Tower. So quick wiretap, wiretapper. Let's figure this out. Let's figure this out. <laughs> yeah, who wiretaps the wiretappers? <laughs> That's what I want to know. So March 27, 2017, Nunes acknowledges that he went to the White House to look over intelligence reports on the, quote, incidental collection of info on Trump's transition team members. It's not a good look. Not good. All right, so now we got some more Russia stuff happening, some more WikiLeaks leaking happening. So on March 7th, WikiLeaks releases thousands of pages of CIA documents regarding their techniques for breaking into cell phones and computers. Also on the 7th, Michael Flynn retroactively registers as a foreign agent for his work on behalf of Turkish interests during the 2016 presidential campaign. It seems bad when it's retroactive. (laughs) That seems kind (laughs) of besides the point. It's kind of like the reverse recusal. That doesn't make you look less guilty. It's not like, oh, I forgot. (laughs) Jeez. On March 20th, or, you know, on or around March 20th, Trump reportedly asked the intelligence chiefs to deny coordination between the Trump campaign and Russia. White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer states that Paul Manafort had a, quote, very limited role in the Trump campaign. You know, campaign chairman. <laughs> uh, very limited. <laughs> on March 10th, President Trump fires New York U.S. Attorney Preet Baharara and also orders the resignation of 45 other U.S. attorneys. Oh, March 20th, 2017, at a hearing of the House Intelligence Committee, FBI Director James Comey confirms the existence of an FBI investigation at a hearing of the House Intelligence Committee. Comey says that the agency is investigating, quote, the Russian government's efforts to interfere in the 2016 presidential election. That includes investigating the nature of any links between individuals associated with the Trump campaign and the Russian government and whether there was any coordination between the campaign and Russians, Russia's efforts. He did not say they were investigating Trump. Though. That's right. I just want to yeah. clear that up. March 22nd, 2017, Trump asked Daniel Coates, director of the National Intelligence, to get Comey to back off investigations back off. into Michael Flynn. I also prefer director of the National Intelligence. Yeah, I, like I like that. Yeah. That's the guy giving out <laughs> IQ tests to people. So, March 24th, 2017, Nunes cancels House Intelligence hearing for former intelligence heads and Sally Yates. That seems like a good idea. Yeah. You don't need that. No, no, need, no need for that. March 27th, 2017, New York Times reports that Senate Intelligence Committee informed the White House it, it wants to question Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor and man who s- I think is a man, Jared Kushner, uh, he would, sorry, Jared Kushner about his meetings in December with Russia Ambassador Kislyak and the head of Russia's state-owned bank, Gorkov. 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 I mean, you know they're not doing anything no, good. I mean, that is the most evil-sounding bank yeah. I've ever heard. All right, so uh, it wouldn't be Trump without some more Flynn news in March. So on March 30th, Robert Kellner, Michael Flynn's attorney, says in a statement that his client is willing to testify before Congress if Flynn receives immunity. General Flynn certainly has a story to tell, and he very much wants to tell it, should the circumstances permit. So March 31st, President Trump tweets, quote, Mike Flynn should ask for immunity in that this is a witch hunt, excuse for big election loss, by media and Dems of historic proportion. Historic. Historic. Yeah. Also on the 31st, a revised financial disclosure form for Flynn was released by the White House that shows he received speaking fees from RTTV, Russian Television Network. And places where you can see Ron Paul, Noam Chomsky, and Glenn Greenwald criticize you as policies. Yeah, I believe the uh, the three horsemen of the apocalypse, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I'll, we'll have to re-listen to the uh, Revelation episodes yes. to find out if that's true. <laughs> Flynn did not report this income when he initially filed his disclosure form in February. Check that box. Yeah, I got to check the box. You got to double check those forms. Yeah. They take that shit seriously. (laughs) We're going to end March with some Comey news. March 30th, President Trump calls FBI Director James Comey to ask what can be done to, quote, lift the cloud of the Russia investigation from his administration. Comey told Trump he was not personally under investigation. Oh, okay. Saying, quote, he finished by stressing the cloud that was interfering with his ability to make deals for the country and said he hoped I could find a way to get out that he wasn't being investigated. I told him I would see what we could do and that we would do our investigative work well and as quickly as we could. (laughs) Just talking right past each other. Just talking right past each other. <laughs> I want loyalty. Yeah, I'll give you honesty. <laughs> Honest loyalty. Great conversation. And yeah, there. Shake hands. All right. So April 
April 6, 2017. Devin Nunes makes an announcement that he will no longer oversee the House Intelligence Committee's Russia investigation. He was doing it so well. Yeah, he was. I... Sad. So April 11, 2017, Washington Post reports that the FBI obtained a secret court order the previous summer under the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act to monitor the communications of Carter Page. The Justice Department uh, convinced the visa judge that Carter Page, quote, was acting as an agent of a foreign power in the case of Russia. That's a good reason to get one of them FISA awards. (laughs) It sure is. I think, yeah, I think that's why we have those. In April 11, 2017, Comey calls Trump back and they speak for about four minutes. Comey states that the president, quote, asked what I had done about his request that I get out that he is not personally under investigation. Comey suggests to Trump that he should contact the acting deputy attorney general to make this request. He said he would do that and added, because I have been very loyal to you. Very loyal. We had that thing, you know. This, (laughs) man, just writes itself. Uh, This is the last time the two men spoke. (laughs) <laughs> what is that thing? I don't know, but it has <laughs> it it has to do with the uh the Comey Trump uh Valentine's Day fan fiction <laughs> we're gonna have to write. <laughs> yeah. Alright, you know, someone who we haven't really talked about too much, not very integral to the Trump campaign slash campaign chairman of the Trump election committee, Paul Manafort. <laughs> um, Oscar uh, suit wear. Ostrich suit wearing Paul Manafort. <laughs> ostrich skin. Uh, ost- yeah, yeah, ostrich, not, not the, the feathers. Yeah, not the, not feathers. the feathers. On April 12th, the Associated Press publishes a story with evidence that Paul Manafort received two separate payments laid out in the so-called, quote, Black Ledger Ooh. in Ukraine. Really good <laughs> band name, by the way. Black yeah, Ledger. Black Ledger. I love it. And then sometime in mid-April, the Justice Department requests Paul Manafort's banking records. Uh. You don't want the Justice no. Department... <laughs> Can you imagine if you got a call from the Justice Department? We want your banking records. (laughs) Fuck, I am fucked. I am fucked. That is not good. And then let's end the month, my birth month, I should add. Ah. Um, I'm a Taurus. Uh, Let's add with Flynn on April 28th. The Senate Intelligence Committee requests that Flynn turn over any documents that are relevant to the Russian investigation. Flynn initially denied the request, but the committee would later subpoena the documents. But that's a spoiler, damn it. Oh, that's true. I should (laughs) have... Shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> and also on the 28th, Jeff Sessions tells the Today Show uh, <laughs> that he is also recusing himself from any investigation into Michael Flynn. <laughs> Damn, Sessions is two for two for the recusals. He, Pretty impressive. What is his job at this point? Know. It's all Rosen, so I can see why. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, I'm going to recuse myself from that. It's like, come on, man. Like his wife or something, like going to dinner. Like, come on. Also, shouldn't uh, most official government announcements may- be made on television shows? Don't you agree with that? Too? I, I, <laughs> I fully agree. We don't need we don't need official press conferences right. anymore when we've got Fox and Friends. I really like, I mean, can't wait for the third recusal on America's Got Talent. <laughs> oh, <laughs> And we hear your talent is uh, not doing your job. <laughs> All right. We've gotten to the last month of this episode. A lot's happened in six months or so, but this is the doozy. <laughs> this is, this is, this is May 2017. <laughs> Hold on to your butts. <laughs> this is basically all about our friend Comey. Yeah. Let's start on May 2nd. Trump states that Comey is a, quote, phony. <laughs> Uh, just got his uh, hardcover version of, um, oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, that thing? Not that thing. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Dishonest Catcher Loyalty? Catcher in the Rye. Oh. Catcher in the Rye. Okay. Uh, and so he wanted to use that word as quickly as he could. <laughs> so Trump states Comey is a, quote, phony, tweeting that he was, quote, the best thing that ever happened to Hillary Clinton. I don't understand that, but I guess the why try. <laughs> I think it has to do with that thing. That uh, thing. That yeah, thing. Got it. I think, yeah. We're going to put all everything under there. <laughs> That's the table of the deep state, I think, is is that thing. (laughs) On May 3rd, James Comey states at a Senate Judiciary Committee hearing that the FBI has, quote, opened investigations on more than one U.S. persons in connection with the FBI investigation into whether the Trump campaign cooperated with Russia's efforts to influence the 2016 campaign. Comey doesn't answer when asked if Trump is under investigation. Of course. Of course. If there's one thing he likes better than telling you you're not investigation, it's not telling you whether you are under investigation. (laughs) Comey does say that the FBI investigators are always open-minded, and no matter what, will, quote, follow the evidence wherever it takes us. He also said, quote, I'm not going to comment on anyone in particular, because that puts me down a slope of, because if I say no to that, then I have to answer succeeding questions. (laughs) 
<laughs> so what we've done is brief the chair and ranking on who the U.S. persons are that we've opened investigations on. And that's that's as far as we're going to go at this point. <laughs> Comey also defends his decisions in the Clinton email probe. But no one questions Comey's decisions to open and close, then open and then close an investigation. No one. No one's answering no one. the real, asking the really important <laughs> questions here. <laughs> Sir, you've got 15 investigations open. Come on. Let's yeah, close on Com- it's Comey is like a cat and investigations are like the door. He just <laughs> wants you to open and close it all day long. Then May 5th, the New York Times reports that a Justice Department Sessions aide asked a congressional staffer if they had any dirt on James Comey. Mm. And then May 8th, Trump tweets that story about campaign collusion with Russia is a complete hoax. Good enough for me. Yep, I agree. It's flim flam. (laughs) Flim flam. Also on May 8th, Sally Yates testifies at a Senate hearing that she had two face-to-face meetings and one phone call with uh, McGahn to discuss Flynn's meetings with Russian investor Kisilak. Just one. Try five next time, Yates. You gotta have five. Gotta have five phone calls. Always. Also on May 8th, Rod Rosenstein, the Deputy Attorney General, oh, drafts a memo making the case for firing Comey after learning that Trump intends to fire Comey. It is not clear on who directed him, if anyone, to write the memo. He would later tell Congress, quote, on May 8th, I learned that President Trump intended to remove Director Comey and sought my advice and input. Notwithstanding my personal affection for Director Comey, hashtag that thing, (laughs) I thought it was appropriate to seek a new leader. And so the next day, May 9th, 2017, President Trump fires FBI Director James Comey. Boom. That's a big day, Brent. Yeah, let's go through it. it. So here's the day. Just before 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Eastern Time, White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer was asked by reporters if President Trump still had, quote, full confidence in his FBI director, James Comey. He said, I have no reason to believe I haven't asked him, so I don't. I have no <laughs> not asked the president since the last time we spoke about this. Three hours later, Trump fires Comey. Uh, so, oh, uh, <laughs> should have spoke to him, Amy. Should have spoke to him. Comey didn't receive the news directly right away. He wasn't in Washington at the time, actually. He received the news of his firing via cable television oh, news. That is rough. There That's was one time I was kicked out of a band. They didn't tell me. I just read it on our website. <laughs> so I kind of it's kind of the same. I feel oh, it's basically the same. Thing. Yeah. So I really feel for Comey. Yeah. In this regard. So he was talking with a group of FBI agents in L.A. at the time, and it was cut awkwardly short as the news hit. <laughs> <laughs> the White House released a statement that president that said the President Trump acted, quote, based on the clear recommendations of Attorney General Jeff Sessions and Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. So Rosenstein cited in a two and a half page memo that Comey's handling of the FBI investigation into Hillary Clinton's use of private email servers for uh, official government business while Secretary of State under President Obama. Rosenstein criticized Comey for holding a press conference on J- July 5th, 2016, in which he publicly announced his recommendation to not charge Clinton and hit for his disclosing on October 28, 2016, that the FBI had reopened its investigations of Clinton. You can't just go around opening and closing investigations. It's not going to catch up to you. That's all I say. Yeah, you yeah. got to. Someone's yeah. got to find out. Yeah, it's going to get the best one eventually. You know? Yep. So he's currently in closing and opening rehab, actually. So oh, that's man. what's happening. <laughs> So, a letter firing Comey was delivered to the FBI by Trump's longtime armed personal bodyguard, now Director of Oval Office Operations <laughs> <laughs> at the White House, Keith Schiller. The letter from Co- Trump to Comey stated, quote, While I greatly appreciate you informing me on three separate occasions that I am not under <laughs> investigation. Loyal. Loyal oh as God. always. Oh, my God. I never, nevertheless concur with the judgment of the Department of Justice that you are not able to effectively lead the Bureau. Five times. If he had told him five <laughs> times, that would have been enough. That's exactly right. Also, we need to know more about Keith Schiller. Yeah. I, I was just thinking this. Like, this yeah. is a guy no one ever talks about. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So, May 10th, 2017, Trump meets in the Oval Office with Russia Ambassador... Wait, I just want to interrupt quickly. That was all one day. <laughs> yes, that was one that day. That was May 9th. That's right. Yeah, you're right. That was May 9th. Just remember that. <sighs> That's an important day. Doozy. So, May 10th, the next day, um, Trump meets in the Oval Office with Russian Ambassador to the U.S., uh, Kislyak, we mentioned before, and Russia Foreign Minister um, Lavrov. 
Sergey Lavrov. The official White House readout of this meeting does not mention that Kislyak was in attendance. So President Trump tells the Russian officials in the Oval Office that firing Comey had relieved, quote, great pressure on him, saying, quote, I just fired the head of the FBI. He was crazy. A real nut job. I faced great pressure because of Russia. That's taken off. Oh, man. Talk about great pressure. I think Comey <laughs> could have helped with that oh in that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. May 11th, 2017. Is this the same? No, it's the next day. So horrible. All right. So in in an interview with NBC's Lester Holt, Trump says that he was thinking of, quote, this Russia thing when he decided <laughs> when he decided to fire Comey. He also said he would have fired Comey with or without Rosenstein's recommendation, saying, quote, he made a recommendation, but regardless of recommendation, I was going to fire Comey knowing there was no good time to do it. And in fact, when I decided to just do it, I said to myself, I said, you know, this whole Russia thing with Trump and Russia is a made up story. It's an excuse by Democrats for having lost an election that they should have won. You know, I think I believe that. I think he did. He he just, I can imagine him saying, you know, this whole Russia thing with Trump and Russia is a made up story. (laughs) I can see him saying that. I personally prefer my president to speak in third person. I don't know about you. I always do. Obama thinks this tan suit is great. (laughs) May 12th, 2017, Trump tweets out, quote, James Comey better hope that there are no tapes of our conversations before he starts leaking to the press. This was the date Senator, uh, senators were expected FBI Director James Comey to brief them on whether Attorney Jeff, uh, General Jeff Sessions could be investigated for perjury. But he was fired, so that was canceled. <laughs> <laughs> Comey should have just gone with this anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to this anyway. It's essentially the same as like, you know, as my going into Barnes and Noble after I quit and got a new job and just started helping customers find books. It's basically the exact same thing. Exactly yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Just it's a, it's a good work. goof, you know. So, May 13th, 2017, in an interview with Judge Perino, Janine Perino on Fox News, Trump denies that he asked for Comey's loyalty saying, quote, but I don't think it would be a bad question to ask. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Is Trump denying he did something, but then sandbagging himself by saying, I actually think it would have been a good idea to do it. (laughs) That's so good. It works every time. So that was two weeks in May. That was was a week in May. Yeah, that's when a week. That was May 9th to May 13th. Yeah. Wow. But May is not over yet. And so we got more Trump with the Russians uh, news to end it off. May 15th, the Washington Post reports that on May 10th meeting with Russian officials, Trump discussed classified information about an ISIS terrorist <laughs> threat, which involved laptop computers aboard commercial airlines. I mean, one thing to say is, uh, one, remember ISIS? Yeah. Man, that remember was them? that was a problem. Yeah, it was. <laughs> uh, those, I almost want to say the good old days, but that would be rude. <laughs> And then May 16th, the next day, the New York Times reports that the source of the intelligence information that Trump disclosed to Russian officials in the Oval Office was from Israel. Oh, Mazel Tov. Oh, yeah, that's great. And the New York Times also reports the existence of the Comey memos. Those typewritten typewritten. in the car memos. (laughs) Yes. Then May 17th, 2017, the Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. For now. Appoints the former FBI Director Robert Swan Mueller III. (laughs) As special counsel to oversee the investigation into any possible collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russian government's actions to influence the 2016 presidential election. And this is where we will pick up next time in our third installment into the Russian investigation. That never ends. That never ends. So what (laughs) did you learn, Brent? I I really do want to know more about his bodyguard. Um, Yeah, I know. I've never heard like until... Until you put this together, I didn't really know much about him. I enjoyed that. That was good. Um, yeah. When um, other than that, um, the the breakdown of the Comey day was good. The fan fiction. Um, I don't the know fan what's fiction, a better. I'm really. We got to look into that. <laughs> I don't know There's what's any. a better title. Um, the thing. That thing or dishonest loyalty. You yeah, know, I, maybe a series. One of them is probably going to be a subtitle. Maybe yeah. a series. <laughs> maybe one's an episode name. Who knows? <laughs> but I want to break down. A steamy breakdown of that day because yeah you know it's it was out. intense well, how about yourself dylan i'm trying to think about uh the number one thing i learned here um i know jeff sessions need to needs to slow down a little more sometimes jeff sessions definitely needs to slow <laughs> down and not lie it's just the, it's the weirdest i mean when you speak with a southern draw you're kind of technically slowing down when you speak right oh man <laughs> All our Southern listeners are going to be upset. (laughs) 
Let's not impugn the way. I'm trying. I, I mean, I think the. I'm gonna go with the bodyguard too. Yeah, I think that's the number one so thing good. that I'm really curious about. Keith. Oh, Keith Schiller, I believe his name was. <laughs> yeah. And so that wraps up this episode, the first ever um, live to us episode. Live to us. Yep. Um, face we to will, face. Our next episode, we'll go back to living thousands of miles <laughs> apart and, and sadly continuing on in that style. <laughs> From here on forth. So if you want to get in touch with us and let us know what we got wrong and what we possibly got right, even, um, our email is none dare call it ordinary at gmail.com. We're also on Instagram, and that's at none dare call it ordinary. And lastly, we are on Reddit, and that is a little different. That is at none dare call ordinary. Couldn't get the it to fit in that Reddit <laughs> username. Um, and lastly, all of that can be found. We are on the website none dare call it ordinary. Dot com. And with that, <laughs> we are done. investigation and then closing it down.